I want to welcome up Apostle Toby Araimi. Come on, why don't we celebrate the grace of God upon his life? Amen. Praise God. Are we blessed today? Do you have a good um, leaders training to those of you who came? It was it was really fun. We had uh, it was really fun. I enjoyed myself yesterday. Who missed yesterday? Let's see. Wave your hand if you missed yesterday. Oh, it's on. Uh, it was our leaders and workers training. Not to worry. We have a leaders and workers retreat coming up. Um, and that is going to be an amazing time. I'm going to make sure we have, uh, I'm flying in a, a leadership and workers specialist. Um, and also, um, my ho I'm hoping one of my parents in the Lord will be there as well. Come and prophesy over us too. Hello. Oh, I have a good echo effect going here. The voice of God. Okay. Today I'm talking about spiritual fathers. You may be seated. I'm gonna, I just felt to do something a bit different today. Every week we kind of just uh, talk at you a little bit. Um, um, and uh, I wanted to maybe take some time to... Uh, I haven't warned anybody that I'm bringing them up to talk to them. I haven't warned them. Uh, today, uh, one of the great joys of sp spiritual parenting or fathering or nurturing people is um, getting to bring them to a place of maturity where they start becoming who God has called them to be. The assignment is not to raise spiritual children. The assignment is to raise mature sons of God and daughters of God doing great exploits for the kingdom. And the assignment is complete when you're no longer needed. Amen. I don't like to be needed. I like to be exceeded. And my assignment is complete when I'm no longer necessary. That's my job, to work myself out of a job. And uh, part of that process requires people who follow. It requires people who are committed. It requires not just that the teacher shows up, but that the student is ready. It also requires a lot of correction. A lot of correction, a lot of discipline. If you're not ready for correction, you probably shouldn't be parented. Um, but the truth is, uh, your life, you have got yourself as far as you can. And so when God introduces somebody to parent you, nurture you, raise you, train you, bring you up, that person's assignment then is to stretch you. That person's assignment is to guide you. That person's assignment is to correct you. And it's your assignment to also learn from their mistakes. Because that person is also a human being with flaws. And uh, so today, I want to call up, who do I speak to first? I want to speak to my thirst. Haley Melendo, please come up and let's talk. Is Sterling here? You don't know where your husband is. That's, that's me every week. Please also, Sterling Record, if he can hear us, come. Surprise. So today we're going to do something a bit different. I'm just going to do interviews, and I'm going to watch time because uh, I have a, a few to get through today. And hopefully you can glean some knowledge, some wisdom from journeying. Um, um, and what that might look like. And I wanted, it was my intention to have authentic conversation today and then uh, pray for you. Sterling has no idea what I'm doing. Welcome, Sterling. Uh, hi. 
<laughs> Is this mic on? I can't hear you. Is it on? It's on. It's a bit low, but it's on. God said to you today, dress nice. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. So, first of all, big welcome to both of you. Can we give them another round of applause, please? Big welcome to both of you. Uh, maybe I'll start with Haley because I met you first. How many years ago now? It must be eight years. Eight years ago, I met you. We've been journeying together now. Um, tell us a little bit about the beginning. Let's go to the beginning. When you first met me. Um, I think the beautiful thing is I met you in a place where you had more or less kind of left ministry. Yes. Um, you were a youth pastor in a church in Woolwich. Yes. And even though you were doing itinerant preaching, mm -hmm. you didn't want your own church at that point. No, no. And you had all. been quite hurt from church. And I, I, could rem I remember that time. And um, ended up having my encounter, giving my life to Christ. You prophesied to me everything that had happened to me. And I remember literally coming. I invited, for those of you who don't know, I invited. No, 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 no. We did. I had a youth church. I just went to hire myself out to anybody that would take me. Because at that point, ministry, you talk about church hurt. Let's talk about sheep hurt for a second. I had left all the sheep. I said, forget these people. And uh, I'm just going to do itinerant speaking. I'll say hi, and then I'll run away. I don't need to be with you week in, week out. And um, I, st I started passing these young kids. And when I say young kids, I mean young. Where's David? David, you were one of them. Now David is a big guy, but David was a, <laughs> he was a kid back then. And uh, your sister, is she here as well? She's somewhere? I don't see her. Is she somewhere here? Oh, there she is. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> so there were a few of them. I think there's a few of them here now. But uh, I was pastoring them back in the day. And um, uh, then we said, let's do a youth event. And guys, don't make it look too churchy. Make it look like, basically, let's trick some unsafe people into the kingdom. Make, make it look like a, like a party. That's what I said. And then they invited I mean, they were doing uh, Dirty Y, Dirty Y, da, 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 that song. And then the drummers were hard, though, but they were mixing worship. They were, they'll be like, uh, uh, <laughs> what was it again? Uh, they were, yeah, yeah, they'll say, uh, and now I'll praise you for the rest of my day. And then suddenly, like, Poof, I got broads in the letter. Da, 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 da. And I said, they didn't understand the assignment. They took it too far. So my friend is naturally saying, you got to preach. This is getting out of control. Now, pastor didn't understand what was going on. He can't hear the music. He's like, this is wonderful. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> but I was there thinking, what is happening? My friend's trying to push me to preach. Then Haley comes on and speaks. Never heard of her in my life. Never seen her. But she blew the whole roof down. I was like, thank God somebody anointed. Not knowing she doesn't know God. She knew of God. You, your mom had a background in God, but deeper than that, she was a practicing witch. So the assignment was just not understood at all. I didn't know all these things. I'm just there like, wow. But you know, someone, when you're anointed, you're anointed from your mother's womb. You may not know it yet, but, but you're, and God has a way of taking what the enemy meant for evil. <laughs> what the enemy meant for evil. Anyway, go on. Yeah, so um, I remember after having my encounter, um, I had never been prophesied to prior to um, Apostle Toby, and literally Apostle read me for filth, he laid hands on me. I pray, I literally fell under the spirit, and I was praying in tongues for about two hours. I remember being like the last person, like I remember getting up out of the spirit and seeing them hoovering, literally, that's how I knew I was the last person, yeah. And I remember literally, um, funny enough, it was actually David and Esther's mom who was the one who was holding me throughout that whole time. As I was crying under the spirit, I didn't know. I literally woke up. I was like, auntie, like, what the hell just happened? She's kind of like, you've been touched. And I remember literally um, getting up, didn't know who, who he was, and literally getting up. And I just heard God say, wherever he goes, you go. You follow this man. Like, you literally basically lay down your life um, and you go where he goes. And I remember just coming to say, like, 
who are you? Like, I don't even know who you are, but wherever you go, I'll go. And We're then I show. said to you, I don't know where I'm going. Yeah. And Those I just, were my exact words. I said, I don't know where I'm going. And I just said, I'm still going to show up. And, you know, I, I ended up going to that church for a while, brought all my friends, all my raggedy friends from ENDS. We all were going there with my Tims, with my oversized tracksuits every single week. And then it got to a point where I was like, you know what, I want to be really close to this man of God. So I, I, prior to, you know, prior to Elijah, I did not like kids. I learned to love kids through Elijah. I literally just said, I want to force myself to learn how to babysit. Me and Elijah would be staring at each other. Apostles at work, Pastor Nicholas at work. I'm here looking at Elijah. Elijah's looking at me. At this point, he's babysitting me. <laughs> at this point, he's babysitting me. Elijah, you'd feed him okra the night before. Elijah has done a serious one, and I'm doing the nappy, and I'm here thinking, what is happening here? But for me, um, that, you know, just, just when I think about the past eight years of my life, you know, um, I, and you know what? I'll even come and say one of the greatest revelations for me was when I introduced you, Apostle never actually said he was Apostle Toby. He said he was Toby. I'm the person that decided to call him Apostle. I'm the person that decided because one of the things I'm constantly learning is that the grace on his life had to come from revelation. It could not come of him pushing it on me. And for a long time, he was Toby. And the crazy thing is when I first came under him, I stopped talking to him for about three months because I was so scared. Like to, to be father, to be corrected, to be discipled is a scary thing. Because I always come and say, people are not scared of failure. They're actually scared of succeeding. Because to succeed, it's going to stretch you and it's going to cost you. And I knew that this man was going to take out a part of me that I don't know if I was ready to actually encounter. So I remember when um, he called me, like, maybe shortly after my birthday. It was my 19th birthday. And he called me. He was like, Haley, I miss you. Where have you been? And I literally just cried and said, I can't be under you. I can't be under you. I'm going to end up idolizing you. I can't be under you. Me and you, we can't speak. Pastor Nicola would call me. I'd be like, I can't be under you. I'm going to annoy you. You can't, I, you can't be my spiritual mom. Pastor Nicola would be on the phone to me for four hours. I'm crying. I can't be under you. And literally, she'd just be like, just come to the house. Just come to the house. Just come to the house. Then they took me to Dr. Sharon's church. And literally, I was with them every single day for weeks. Then I remember um, ended up being with, uh, um, at the time, me and Sterling were actually friends. Sterling liked me. Sterling's always liked me. Um, <laughs> period. <laughs> Um, so, <laughs> me and me and me and Sterling, we were we were just friends. And at the time, I was with my ex-con boyfriend, and you know I have to say ex-con, yes, because he he definitely went back to prison after. Um, but the reason why is because I remember I wanted to bring him to Apostle, and I remember going to Apostle and saying, "Listen, like at the time I called him Toby, I was like Toby, like my boyfriend wants to baptize me." Apostle said over my dead body. You are not getting <laughs> baptized by this guy. I couldn't even introduce him. I went to Pastor Nicholas like, he wants to baptize me, he wants to disciple me. That's not, that's not even the worst story. The worst story that I remember of Haley was she, she got saved and she's all excited about the prophetic, but she's still got her juju thing going on. So she goes to a meeting. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> she goes to one meeting. She goes, she comes to me and they say, I got prayed for by baby Jesus. I said, what do you mean, baby Jesus? So I got to this meeting, and the woman turns into baby Jesus. And she started prophesying over me. I said, how'd she sound? And I said, baby Jesus, did baby Jesus lay hands on you? She Listen. Said, yes, yes. I said, kneel down right now. I'm breaking, I'm breaking baby Jesus' power over you. <laughs> you know what? I always come and say, zeal without wisdom is so dangerous. And when I gave my life to Christ, I was so zealous. And every single prophetic meeting, it did not matter who the pastor was or who the church was. I was going to be there because I was so hungry for the prophetic. And I'm so grateful for this man's discipleship, his tutelage, his fathering, because not only did I grow in the prophetic, but I grew in discernment. And I was able to discern what is good and what is God. Because I'll tell you, baby Jesus gave me a real good prophetic words. <laughs> it was in English. But it wasn't a God word. Um, and even just, you know, just to round up, um, just for the past eight years, and I'm, I'm sure one time we'll get into it because it was, I think the most, the, the thing that I've learned and something I'm constantly getting, the girls that I mother and the girls that I disciple, I'm always talking about offense. And I used to be, one of the first things Apostle taught us when we started like London was, 
Don't I want to get offended. there to this topic because Haley was so close to me. Yes. And then disappeared. For how long was it? A year. A year. We journeyed together. Before we get there, talk about, because you're bringing out so many points of parenting people. One of the points, obviously, that you've brought out is you have to have proximity. Yeah. It's tough without proximity. Mm. One of the things is you have to have commitment. These are things I was going to teach on today, but I thought, why don't we just discuss and see what happens? You have to have a sense of, I was going to speak from the side, not of a father, but from the side of a son. Um, you have to have that sense of commitment to want to grow. You said something so powerful that it wasn't failure you feared, it was success. Because now you have somebody who believes in you, now you want to run away. That's the children of Israel. Yeah. Someone believes in them. Moses, let's go to the promised land. Now they want to say, let's go back to Egypt. Which tells you all along, we haven't feared failure. We've been afraid of our own potential to succeed and to win. And then uh, you talk about, that. I think that I remember the significant moment things turned, and you may have a different memory. But I remember you coming to my house to talk about your school business and things like that and whatever. And then we went through different things. And then, and then I noticed something after that. Suddenly, pshh, you may have a different story. But you warned people. You used to say, if you're going to my house, bring tissues or something like that. You're going to cry. Yes. Talk on correction. Talk on all of that, that area. Um. You know, one of the things that Apostle Toby took me through, which I'm so grateful for, is a lot of inner healing. And I did not want to heal. I wanted to be anointed without being healed. And Apostle was like, we need to do some inner healing. So sit down and we're going to do some counseling. And it got really deep. Like, it got to a point where I was so uncomfortable. I literally left, I left the counseling meeting needing counseling. Like, I kid you not. I, the is, that, amount, is that when you said that no one should go to Apostle? Yeah, I literally said no, I said no one should go. I used to evangelize against Apostle. And, and I don't do counseling. I actually don't like doing it personally. I hate doing it. But I'm good. if I do it, I'll go after your demon. I'll get yes. it. But I don't like doing it because I feel a personal cost every time I do it. Mm. It affects me. I don't know how to explain it. Some yes. people are graced for it. I'm graced to do it, but one, I'm, I'm so empathetic that it takes a long time for it to wear off mm. what people have gone through. But yeah, go yeah, ahead. So Apostle literally was like, we need to deal with your childhood. We need to deal with your rejection. We need to deal with the neglect. We need to deal with the abuse. We need to deal with previous relationships. We need to deal with everything. And literally in that session, I just said, you know what, God, yeah, this ministry thing, if this is what it's going to require from me, I don't want it. And from that moment, I feel like, even though I ran away from healing, it was healing that actually allowed me to succeed. And one of the things I definitely would say is that your business can only grow as far as your healing. Your finance can only cannot go beyond your healing. Your wis it cannot go beyond that. And it was only until when Apostle really took me through some really deep inner healing, really sitting me down every single week, even the way he would correct me. Like, people would... And I was even having this conversation of, of, with one of the, those under me, and I was basically saying that I remember when I would when Apostle would correct me, let's say for example, I'm speaking counsel with somebody and they'd be like, he shouldn't do that. You need to leave him. You need to do that. You need to do that. And I had so many people for years that were literally trying to convince me to leave Apostle Toby. And at the back of my head, I just thought, oh no, this is normal. But I'm so grateful that I didn't listen to those out outside voices because they came off perception of the fact that, you know, what I told them, but Apostle knew exactly what he was dealing with. And he knew exactly who I was about to become. So the level of correction wasn't down to control. It was down to my destiny. So even the level of correction, he'd be harsh on me sometimes. There'd be times where literally he'd be like, no, you're not going there. I'm like, yo, like, <laughs> the girl in ends with me be like, who are you talking to? But then I had to humble myself and just be like, yes, sir, I'm going to be there. There'd been moments where I'd been booked for speaking and just like, no, you're coming to church. Yes, sir, I'm coming. Um, and even the first, like, London meeting, the first ever Light London service, I wasn't even around because I had a magazine shoot. When Apostle found out, the way I got, the way he got onto me, he was like, it's our first ever Light London service. You're not even here. You want to prioritize this. You want to prioritize that. And he just reminded me, he said, Haley, if you don't learn to put the things of God first, this, this will be the last magazine cover you'll ever be on. No, seriously, though. Serious. Like, Apostle, serious. Apostle, <laughs> you guys get the soft part of Apostle. Us... When we first, eight years ago, 
The way Apostle used to whip us, or some of you guys, you'd be crying, Apostle told me to delete Instagram. (laughs) You don't know eight years ago what Apostle would tell us to do. (laughs) But every generation of leaders I train, every one of them says that I'm easier on the next ones. But you know what it is? It's when you're starting a church, you need hard heads. Now we're in, you know, a bit more comfortable. But then you need sort of, you need people who could, because I feel like starting a church, you throw everything at the door. You know, kitchen sink, everything, you headbutt the door at some point. And if the people with you at that initial phase aren't hard people, then even I could, even I could fall apart. But that, that's, that's interesting, because I look back and think, was I really that harsh? Wow. Yeah, they all agree in Apostle. No, but you know, if you ask Mutter, which will get up here, Mutter will tell you I'm very kind in comparison. Because you guys be showing up late for meetings. Mutter will tell you in her time, if you showed up late, I locked the door. I didn't care how far you traveled, I sent you home. And if you didn't show up for meetings, I just fired you, set you down and said goodbye. But this one's like, oh, God love you. She, she comes and goes, also, you're so loving. I think it's the grandparent thing. Like, I see my parents with my children, and I feel like I've been defrauded because they're so kind and so nice. Talk to us about the period of walking away. It was a hard period. I definitely think that Sterling should speak as well. Sterling, go for it, because then you come along as well, and you guys are all... Guys, Apostle hated me at one point, okay? Did I? <laughs> hated me. I've come in now, and very mind, me and Apostle, we know, we know each other. I was in Apostle's house every single day. Every day. But now I've decided... You come to my house and just stay. Okay, okay. We no, don't no, need no, to, we're going we don't to, need to go mention here. that part. We don't he need to go would, He would just stare. Nothing else. He, and back then he had these creepy little braids and he just would just, <laughs> he'd just be, he'd just be staring like, and he'd be watching us play with the children. We'd be like, Sterling, do you want to talk? Do you want to okay. say anything? Be like, let me, let me give the, let me give the context <laughs> to this, how I ended up in this state, right? Okay. So before, before I was in Apostle's house every day, um, I decided to move to Windsor. And before that, I had a really good relationship with my dad. Everything was going well. Many of you know the story of how I met my dad. We have the same name. I bumped into a guy in Westfield. I was praying every single day, if my dad is real, I want to meet my dad. I bump into this guy in Westfield. He tells me there's a guy in his church with the same name as me. I go to the church. The guy says he's my dad. He's been looking for a son he hasn't seen since he was a baby. So I meet my dad. I get saved. Yeah? It's all going amazing. Then I find out about these twins, right? This is, this is one of the twins. I find out about these twins. They're doing ministry. They're doing these prophetic things. I decide to move to Windsor to be closer to Dr. Sharon, um, your brother. And then you moved to Windsor as well. But in that process, my dad kind of disowned me. He, didn't, he wasn't happy about the prophetic stuff. He was really, really unhappy with it. We have a really good relationship now. But in that period of my life, he was like my biggest op. Like he... he he was not having any of it. He had plans for me in his church. So the fact that I was leaving, he took it very, very personally. So when I was in Apostle's house, it was as if I was damaged to the point where I had no dad anymore. And so I'm sitting in his house and I'm watching to see if this guy's real. Oh. That's, Deeper. The, that's the context. Deeper ones. Okay, it took a while to figure that one out. I didn't, I, I didn't understand. I was just like, he's just staring at us. What did you find out when you were in the house? What was your discovery? Hmm. I couldn't believe the way you guys loved these people. I couldn't believe it. They would come to your house. They will eat all your food. They will stay till 2 a.m., 3 a.m., and you had energy for them all the time. You minister to them. You speak to them for hours. You pray for them. You counsel them. Then you have to deal with your own children, your own marriage. Because I was in the house all the time. And then your own business as well. I remember when you moved to Windsor and you were worried about leaving the lights on. Because you were like, this is a new financial level for me. If we leave the lights on, what if we can't pay the electric bill? 
I remember that. I was in the house. And all these people would come and see you as an answer, even though you were still figuring out these different things. It was really, like, interesting to watch. But it's always interesting to me how people learn more from observing than from me sitting down, teaching, speaking, ETC. And I think that's the truest way to learn. Majority of what I learned in ministry, I, I learned from watching. I would stare, maybe not as obvious as you. You know, I would stare from the side of my eye and sort of like, okay, okay, what are they doing now? How are they responding to this? Why are they acting like this? What's happening? How do you have this conversation? How do they handle that conflict? So anyway, so I hated you. Yeah, okay, back to the hate part, okay? So... Obviously, we have this relationship. He sees me. I'm, I'm staring. He watch, kind of watched me grow, right? I'm, I'm much better than that time, right? Oh, much, okay. much. Oh, night and day. Okay. You, you talk cool. now. That's, okay. a, Great. that's a good start. So then I decide that I want to marry his, one of his daughters. <laughs> and now I see a whole different side to a puzzle <laughs> that I've never seen before. <laughs> I remember now, yeah. Okay, I remember now. Yes, yes. Because I thought, this guy's coming to mess her up. I thought the enemy was sending somebody to mess her up. So I was like, listen, I started praying harder than I've ever prayed before. I wasn't praying against you. I was just trying to figure you out. What, what was your motive? Why are you here? I think I even asked you, like, why? I remember I came to Apostle's house. So me and Haley just had a conversation about, like, you know, potentially liking each other. Next thing I do, immediately... Me and Apostle lived very close to each other. I left my house. I went to Apostle's house immediately. We were doing some filming or something like that. And I just said, uh, Apostle, you know, Haley, you know. Haley. And he was like, yeah, Haley. And I was like, I think I kind of like her. And he was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> like, he made me wait about five hours. I think we had the conversation at 2 a.m. He, he made me wait about five hours that evening till he was ready to have the conversation about it. And I remember you ordered food. You ordered roosters as comfort food so that we could have the conversation. Um, and he was just like, you know, this is like somebody coming to take Yana from me. And I was like, is it, is it that deep? I didn't understand the depth, but I get it now. So uh, there was a whole period of less offense. offense. Yeah. There was so much going on at that time, and yeah. then there was this disappearing. Then I wasn't talking to you, and you weren't talking to me. I mean, to be honest, you, you, we blocked each other. We blo Oh, no, I, I outright restricted your account on social media. I, I didn't block, I restricted. Till today, no, you're... Russell, no, you are blocked. I, I didn't blocked. block you. No, you was... No, you, no. you blocked me. No, 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 you blocked me because... No, 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 no. Apostle, I, you blocked I me. I restricted. Apostle, you blocked I me. I put you. Toby around me and he was not coming up. <laughs> I was blocked. People would repost him. I could not click on his page. But do, but do you know what? The, the reason why it's so... I, do you know what? This is just so prophetic. And I feel I'm even getting emotional because I remember at the time when me and Apostle were not speaking, I literally had a vision of this very moment. I had a vision. And I literally said to Apostle when we got... When, when the, and I said it to my husband. I was like, I keep having this dream where I'm sitting with Apostle and we're all laughing about everything that happened. But at the time, it was not funny. Like, I'm talking about Not we're having funny. blown... Like, there was a time when me and Apostle had one big disagreement, argument, and Sterling had to collect me and drop me back to London on the train. I could not... I was shivering. Like, I literally thought I was going to drop on the track. This was... This year was... We just got engaged, by the way, yeah. at the start of this year. So this was pretty much engagement to... August, yeah. We just got in, to, engaged in August. So it was, yeah. To wedding, basically. Yeah. Literally, even him being at the wedding was literally just a miracle. Literally. Because he wasn't, I invited him, I think, a few weeks before. He was not meant to be at my wedding. Even for him to bless me as a father, I wept. Anyone that saw my wedding, the way I was crying, it was like this was a miracle. And I remember even at the time um, with, and you know, offense, the reason why offense is so dangerous is. And I would preach on offense. Listen. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, it's my number one message. And partly it's because. I almost feel you have to journey with everyone in offense. Yeah. At some point, Jesus said it like this, it's impossible, but offenses must come. I hate that. 
Because it means as long as you're in human interaction. That's my, probably my aversion to proximity. Because it's like, boy, what do I have to deal with in you? Come on. Because the enemy will come through your cracks. He's going to come through your issues. He's going to come through your insecurities. And you are dealing with two imperfect people in this relationship. That's what people don't realize. Even spiritual father doesn't mean God. I'm not in his class. Do you understand? Spiritual father just means pointing to God. That's the perfect one. Yes? And doing your best to not mess things up sometimes. That's really my prayer. But go ahead. That, that year was, was honestly probably the, probably, the hard, probably the hardest year of my life, to be honest, to support, to support her through it. Um, it was just tears. I nearly, locked off, I nearly locked off the wedding. Yeah, it, it was a very difficult year. Um, because I guess you don't realize, especially Haley not having a father growing up, her father passing away when she was young, how much of a role Apostle played in her life. And to feel like you've lost that, that father, I think it just threw her. And most, most of the leaders in here who, who were kind of with Haley when she was going, like, going in like London, they'll say, Haley's like closest to Apostle, right? For Haley to leave like London was like, oh, it never was happened. a big deal. Even outside like London. It was like, ooh, something wrong. Something's going on. You know how people like to get in your business all of a sudden. Literally. People are calling me, oh, something's wrong. In Light London's about to fall apart. Watch. Hayley Melinda has gone. That's a big deal. Yeah. I had big apostles in this country for me, trying to father me. Yep, I had people trying to take me from apostle. I had people literally prancing onto me. Like, yep, now that you're not under this man of God, let me cover you. So it was, e I feel some people have been waiting for that moment for me to They're leave still him. waiting. Oh, not, yeah, but it's not, not going to happen. Not, they will forever wait. In Jesus' Amen. name. It's Amen. not going to happen. I like that. Listen, anyone yes. that knows me knows I'm loyal to the bone. Yes. I'm loyal to the bone. Um, so now that I'm back, listen, it's, it's, just, it's long for the enemy anyway. But the journey back was interesting, and we'll close on this because yeah, there's, there's more sure. to, to bring up. But the journey back was interesting because I'd be having dreams about you. I was having dreams about you. I was dreaming you're coming back, and then I say, God, whatever, let her go, let her go, do whatever. You know, you have to develop a hard heart. You have to act tough even when you're really, I was wounded, but you have to kind of act real tough. And I said, well, I'll let her go. She's gone to do whatever she wants. He was like, how do you feel? I don't care. I don't care. But, but uh, she doesn't bother me one bit. But deep down inside, huh, I was broken inside, you know. Um, what, there was an interesting moment that brought a turnaround. Well, there were two, probably. I think Prophet Barry um, did no, something once. No, it was Rev Rev Osbert. Osbert. No, Rev Osbert. Osbert second, but Prophet Barry was first. Something no, there, about was even another, there was even another moment. So what happened, actually, is in this time, God had started speaking to me about, like, I have to go back to Apostle Toby um, and that he's my spiritual father. Now, people don't know that Toby is his second name. His first name's actually David. So I was actually in a, um, a service on Father's Day, and the whole sermon was called Forgiving Your David. <laughs> oh, I love God. And I was sitting in that service, and it was like, you need to forgive David. David was not perfect, but David is your father. I, at this point, I thought, am I the only one in this church? <laughs> and bear in mind, it's in Ark. So it's 400 people. So at the time I had left and I was going to Ark Church. So, and the mad thing is, is it was a guest preacher. So this woman had never preached at Ark before. Mm. So she was talking about how she had to forgive a David and the importance of forgiving David and how, you know, your David is not going to be perfect, but you need to forgive him because David has a heart after God. And, and, and I was just like, yo, God, you're in my business. And I remember literally leaving there and I remember literally walking back because prior to, um, within this time, I hadn't even come to Stratford on a Sunday in about a year. So I was completely avoiding She didn't want to see anyone. I'd have pan There'd be times I'd come to Stratford and I'm panic having panic attacks. Because I did not want to see, I didn't want to see anyone from like London. I'd literally, Sterling literally would, we'd be in Stratford Station, I'm having a panic attack. And Sterling would have to be like, we need to go. Like, we need to leave. I could not come to Stratford for a year in that time that I wasn't in like London. So in that time, I literally was like, babe, I need to message Apostle. Like, I need to forgive him. Like, I just... So I messaged him on Father's Day. 
when I said happy Father's Day, Apostle, just wanted to come and say like um, something like, I wouldn't be the woman I am today if it wasn't for your father and I just want to let you know that I forgive you. Um, and then he messaged me back saying, you don't know how much this means to me. Like, we're going to talk soon. Now, about maybe a few months prior to that, Prophet Barry called me out. And Prophet Barry... Were you in the meeting? I was not in the meeting. Yeah, you I weren't there. The That's meeting. the amazing thing about it. Who was there? Fredita. There was Fredita, yeah. So he called out Fredita first. Then he came and said, you have a friend that's from Uganda and Congo. Mm. And the, the things that's in her line, in, on her dad's side, that basically the enemy wants her out of your church. The enemy wants her to leave her pastor. But you need to basically pray for that girl, that that girl was not meant to leave your church. But the enemy's working overtime to get her out of the church. Can you imagine? Sometimes it's so, it's, the prophetic is very interesting to me because it's like you'll think there's a natural thing going on. Yep. Meanwhile, there's been a, like a com campaign in the realm of the spirit to remove you from a place. Yes. And you'll think you've made that decision yourself, but the enemy's doing some violent things around to make so stuff happen. Yeah. And, and there's no way this man knows anything he didn't, he didn't know about. Anything. He prophesied the day that I got engaged, the day that I was, the day I got engaged. Literally, he called, he literally, Prophet Barry said everything. He called out Sterling's name, that Sterling's going to preach, that I'm going to speak around the world. There was a lot of things that he was saying that he never, he never knew about us. Um, and at that point, even when Freddie, Fredlin, Fredita, they sent it to me, I was so offended. Mm. I literally even, I even, I even had to repent because I even cursed Prophet Barry. I was literally like, yo, this false prophet, like, whatever. But I repented at that point because he is really a serious man mm. of God. And I was just like, this false prophet, like, all these prophets want to try and manipulate me. And this, I was so offended. I, mm. So even when that word came, I didn't receive it. Mm. I did not receive it. I was like, oh, come on. I know Apostle probably called him. I'm not, I swear. I literally, and I would he, say. He said he had given instruction, right? Yes, for me what to. What was it again? Um, for me to take some tiles for him to bless it. Something like that. And yeah. I remember Haley was just like, I'm never going to take no towels to him, ever. Like, yeah. That was the attitude. I'm, not <laughs> I I'm was, never going to give this man anything. I was like, Apostle will never see me again. That guy would never. Like, at that point, I was on crud. And anyone that knows me knows I love hard. But when, when, you're, when you love hard, on the other side, it's another issue as well. Yeah. So for me, it was like, because of how much I loved him, that's how much, on the other side, how offended I was. So just to round up, obviously, because of time. Um, the foot now, the third now, Rev Osbert. Rev oh Osbert. my gosh, Rev Osbert my came God. and spun me differently. Was anyone here for Rev, Rev Osbert? Osbert? Does anyone remember? So, some of you guys were in that out, service man. for Rev Osbert. So, it was Bianca's birthday that day, in it, Bianca's. It was Bianca's birthday that day. Bianca, I think, Bianca, you sat me down probably a week before. Bianca sat me down. She comes and says, Hayley, this is not you. How can you leave Apostle? You to leave Apostle. Bian Bianca was shut. I said, I said, who is this girl shouting at me? Like, I'm just, <laughs> at this point, I said, Bianca, me and you can't talk. Blah, 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 blah. Like, Freddie's calling me. They'll, Freddie, I love Freddie, but Freddie was a real op that time. Let me tell you why Freddie was an op. <laughs> I love Freddie. Freddie would be at my, I'll be with Freddie. Freddie will FaceTime Apostle in front of me. <laughs> hey, Apostle! <laughs> I'm not speaking to the man of God. Yeah, so Apostle, I'm going to come to the house, yeah, and you can see me in the background. Like, she's even making it very clear. <laughs> that Haley's there. And I'm like, wow, Fredita. Freddie was like, Haley, you need to stop this. You need to stop being silly now. Come back to come back to like London. You're being too, you're being silly now. Bianca sat me down. Haley, me and you, we've been through too much of a puzzle for you to leave. Like this man raised you. How can you? And I, and I remember with Bianca, I definitely will come and say, Freddie and Bianca, God definitely used them. Because at that point, that's when I felt like my heart was being jiggered. And, and one thing I would definitely say, and I'll, you know when you're offended, you need friends that are strong, you know. You need friends that are going to remind you how important covering is. Because the most dangerous thing is for you to be in that world and you're not covered. Because this man of God, there's been times where I have been broken and he'll come and say, hey, you're in my spirit, I'm praying for you, daughter. Like, there's been times where I was being shaken. The enemy literally wants to sift me. But I know that this man would be praying for me. I'll never forget when I was running Kent and there was a witch that Asher projected into my room. I'll never forget it. This man of God called me. And as soon as he called me, the witch disappeared. And he came and said, I've been praying for you from, from Windsor. I don't know what. My, I've had a headache the whole day because the enemy was trying to send witchcraft to you, Haley. There's been times where literally I knew the enemy wanted me. But because my, man, because my apostle prayed for me, I know that literally I was able to overcome, but just to round it up here, 
Rev Osbert came and he called out Sterling first. He came and said he's seen a light-skinned guy called Sterling. If anyone knows anyone called I, Sterling, I still listen down. to this word till the, to this, till this day. day. I play it in the house <laughs> to this day. Because he came and said, does anyone know any names like that? Sterling, Sterling, Sterling. 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 That's Sterling. why I still Sterling. call him Sterling. Sterling. Yes. So then what happened is that Nathan <laughs> came down and he thought Nathan was Sterling, but Nathan said, I'm standing in the gap. So he went to, he started doing Sterling first, started giving Sterling a prophetic word. We weren't word. there, by the way. We yeah, weren't we weren't the there. At this point, I wasn't in like London. I was not in like London. Um, Sterling came down, sorry, Nathan came down. He prophesied over Nathan and he said, um, he said, he started praying, prophesying over Sterling. Then he came and said, there's a woman that God is going to bring Sterling and she's going to have a lot of money. She has a good heart. She has a good... Um, Holly, 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 Holly. That her name is Haley, <laughs> and she's going to get millions of pounds and all this type of stuff, prophesying basically everything, right? So then he came and said that there's an altar on my mother's side in Uganda, my mom's Ugandan, that literally, because you guys are here, you're going to pray for her and it's going to break. I kid you not, I don't know where I was, but I felt something shift where I was. But I was not in the church. I think I was at home. But I felt something break. And it was as if I could forgive Apostle properly. Like, that's how I know whatever happened with me and Apostle was very spiritual. Because I wasn't even in the room when you guys prayed and broke that spirit. So what happened is I was already getting ready to go to Bianca's birthday that same evening. I hadn't seen Apostle for about eight months. And I hadn't seen Pastor Nicola for about the same amount of time. And I remember going in. I didn't see Apostle yet. Everyone came in. Everyone was quite shocked. People were like, oh, my gosh, Haley's here. Because it was like, ooh, we ain't seen her for a long time. We don't know what she's on. So I kind of just kept quiet, just said, yeah, everyone knew I was obviously getting married. Majority of the people weren't invited. Um, no, I'll be honest, I was so offended. I was like, none of you guys, none of you guys are never come to my wedding. That's literally what I was, that's what I was on. And I sat down with different people at the time. Even, yeah, God started convicting me. I even started inviting people there. And I said, they'll, they'll bring you to my wedding. Just come, just come. And then Apostle walked in. And I remember thinking to myself, I remember literally being so scared. And I remember just hearing the Spirit of God say, go and speak to him. But before, uh, before I went to go speak to him, Rev Osbert grabbed me. He says, do you go to this church? I said, no, man of God, I left. And I was so proud. I was like, I left like London. <laughs> then that man of God came and said, mm, what's your name? I said, Haley. Then he said, mm. He says, you know that God brought me from Ghana for you? I said, who? Because I wasn't meant to meet Rev Osba. I didn't know. He wasn't meant, Bianca, he wasn't meant to be at your dinner, was he? He wasn't meant to be at the dinner. He sat me down. He said, who were you to that man? As an apostle, pointed to apostle, and I was like, I was his daughter. He says, go to your father and go reconcile now. He says, where God is taking you, you will not tap into the things God has for you if you're not under this man. And I literally stood there. I called Sterling first. I said, babe, I don't know. Out of all the prophets that have come and said to me, go back to Apostle, this is the only one that I really feel convicted by. So I went to Apostle after. I grabbed him, spoke to him outside briefly and just said, Apostle, I'm back. I'm sorry. I literally just cried. I was just like, I don't even know. I, 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 could, I can't even tell you what had even happened. But in that moment, we made up, and then we went back inside. Then the next person I had to go for was Pastor Nicola. Me and Pastor Nicola ended up sitting there for about two hours, and it was like I cried so much because with Pastor Nicola, Pastor Nicola designed both my wedding bands, by the way, with my husband. That's how deep my relationship goes with both of them. That Sterling knew the only person that he can go to to design my wedding, my wedding ring was Pastor Nicola. So I literally was just crying, saying, oh, I'm so sorry this happened, and forgive me, and stuff like that. And just to round it up, you know, I left that meeting, literally, I left that room, that restaurant, not knowing that I had gone through the biggest deliverance I'd ever encountered in my life. Nobody had to lay hands on me. All it took was for me to be obedient. Because any man of God can prophesy to you, any person can lay hands on you, but until you're obedient then you won't be delivered. And I'll just, I'll say this is the most important part because a lot of people, when it comes to offense, it's like, okay, how do you bounce back? Because me and Apostle, we're, we're close again, we're talking. Like, how do you build yourself back when you're deeply offended? I think it's really important that I end it here. Be intentional. The next day I was at his house. 
Did I want to be there? No. I didn't want to be there, I'll be honest, because I was scared. I was like, oh my gosh, like, I'm going to look like I beg. How can I? I? And the mad thing is with me, no, I'll be, I'll be real. And the mad thing is with me, I was so angry. I never outwardly said I left like London. But if you was watching my socials on the time, I was outside, I was drinking. People would literally be messaging me saying, woman of God, what happened to you? Like, you used to be so on fire for God. Now you're out here backing shots on your Instagram. Like, I, 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 I was ready to leave faith. And people would message me and be like, what has happened to this girl? Like, Haley used to be so on fire, and now she's just, God knows what I was doing. And I remember literally, I never, I did not want to go back to Apostle. Even though I forgave him, I would literally vowed to myself, I said, you know, I literally said to myself, you know what, I can forgive him, but I'm not going to be close to him again. Like, I, can, I don't mind being a member, but I don't want to be a daughter. And literally, I had to go with, with Freddie, Bianca, I was at their house every day, I'd be like, Freddie, drive me to Apostle's house. And I'd be in that car, silent. I'm not speaking to Freddie. I'll even get to the house. I'm angry. I'm, me and Kaysen are looking at each other, screwing each other. Because I'm here like, bro, I don't want to be here. Kaysen, I don't want to be here. And Kaysen's looking at me like, what's wrong with this girl? And every single, like, literally, day after, and that was the time you moved, I remember, you, when you were moving from the old house to the new house. God came and said, help them move. I'm still offended. I'm still hurt. But I'm still like, you know what? I miss the apostle. I'm at the house. I'm at the house. I'm at the house. Every single day, it was so intentional. I'm still going to be at the house. I'm still going to serve. I'm still going to show up. And literally, it's through me serving. That's how I got healed. And then we ended up having a conversation. We, went, we ended up going out. We ended up having a four-hour conversation. We put everything out on the table. And both of us could see how the enemy worked so overtime to make us both offended. And it literally just got to a point when I was just kind of like, wow. When I think now to where I am now, how God has literally changed my life around, even just being commissioned as apostles last week. Like, that would have never happened if I did not forgive my spiritual father. So when it comes to covering and when it's so much deeper, I hope you guys know that the enemy will work overtime to take you out of covering. Please, anyone that is here, if you are under this house, hear me when I say this. I have been through the fire. I have been through the fire. I've sworn at apostle. How real can I be? I've shouted at this man of God, sworn, called him out of his name. I'm not proud of it. I'm not proud of it. But you see what offense can do. It can make the very thing that is meant to bless you, it can take you out of it. So even just the intentionality, and still till this day, I'm still intentional. Every single time I land back from the airport, I'm always at apostle's house. I don't care how tired I am. My husband will come pick me up from the airport and we're going to Apostle's house. Sometimes I'm falling asleep at his house. I'll be on a nine-hour flight. I'm like, I don't care. I'm going to see my spirit. The first person I'm seeing when I land is my spiritual father. Because I understand being close to this man of God. I understand how much of who I am and where I'm going is literally going to be down to his tutelage. So I know, I know it wasn't maybe, I, this wasn't planned, but I'm sure that God, I feel like some people have been delivered in this room. I can feel it. I feel like there's some people that you probably are offended with Apostle. No, <laughs> let's be honest. Offended with covering or offended with... Why do I feel trauma when you just said Sorry. that? <laughs> no, but it's true because I have people all the time who are like, you will never see me have a spiritual father. You will never see me have a spiritual mother because of offense. And it's so sad because I'll be very honest. I've seen people leave. I don't want to say Apostle Toby or anything like that, but I've seen people leave covering. And I've seen their life go like, I've seen people leave the faith when they came and said, I don't want to do covering. I've seen people come and say, I want to start ministry without covering. And I've seen the ministry go, and it's just, it's so deep. And I'm so grateful. And I just want to say this publicly. Thank you so much, Apostle. Thank you for forgiving me. Seriously, because it's one thing to say sorry it's another thing for the man of God to forgive. And let me just come and say, this man of God did not come and say, he didn't even come and say, um, you know, okay, let's take it slow. No, 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 no. Even, even my husband was scared. Even when I oh, came and said, 100%. 100%. He was so doubtful. He was like, listen, you guys haven't speaking, been speaking for a year. Now you want to be Because of the pain day. she felt, I was like, I don't want you, I don't, we can't be having this again. So can we just 
you know, Slow take down. some time, guys. Yeah. Can we take some time? Because I was back sewing to him again, tithing to him again. I was back, you know, serving, doing what every single day. I'm still leaving the house at 2 a.m. It's like old Haley, basically. Like, and he'd be like, calm down. Both of you would, and I, I know we're not gonna have time for others today. We'll do we'll do more. But this is I think God is just doing something so powerful. So I just wanted to continue. Um I hope everyone understands this is not, I hope you know, this is not Toby or Imey's show. This is not me trying to say I'm the best thing since sliced toast. I'm really far from it. My, my idea of spiritual parenting is to point people to Jesus and to point people to the Father and to also let them know that God has put so much inside of them that is yet to be discovered and pulled out. And that's why we're discussing this. It was Father's Day and it sort of catalyzed this topic for me how few people understand what parenting is all about. But also, you've, you've said so many things that people can glean from that I think is more than a teaching. The, uh, I, was, I actually had all of these points written down. The, yeah. the, the sort of intentionality it takes, the decisiveness, uh, the, serv the, the serving uh, connection uh, that's involved. Um, but also just the realness of the relationship, that it requires a proximity. It requires, I think it was Saul and Jonathan, one gave the, the shield, the other gave a spear, which means I won't defend myself and you can stab me now at any time you want to. That that's what relationship requires, a lowering of your guard. Now, uh, perhaps... Uh, I sat there and watched you do your ministering and your first event that you both did, equipped, was just phenomenal. And honestly, I just sat there, I sat back there and thought, I'm so proud of both of you. It's not just because what you've done, it's not what makes me proud, it's that you've gone through this journey and you've processed properly and very, very few in your generation are doing that anymore. Very few have that spiritual understanding. Uh, they think of this in a carnal way, in some kind of messed up way. Very few have that spiritual understanding. To see you become who God's called you to be and traveling all over the world and doing great things, I just want to say well done. We're proud of you as a church. You're doing amazing. Keep on burning. In spite of the haters and the naysayers, keep doing what God has called you to do and hold your head up high. And, and you have a lot uh, to be proud of. Well done uh, to the two of you. And uh, now even stepping into the apostolic ministry is going to require a new level of pioneering, a new level of grace. Uh, to, and I know both of you are really in discovery phase right now as to what that looks like. Yes. Um, have you got any clues? You know what, I feel like one of the most important conversations I had with you this year was I said to Apostle, Apostle, I feel like God's calling me to be a spiritual dad. And that made me throw up. Like, I was like, Ugh! like, ill. You like, have no idea how much I was irked by being called dad. Mm. I still struggle with it. That's why I call you Pops. I still struggle with Pops, Pops, dad, all of it. Same, People. Actually. I struggle with it, and I'll be honest with you. I prefer Apostle. I even prefer Toby sometimes. And I, I, I'm not saying that as a humility thing. I'm saying it as in what you may not realize is whilst you were being a daughter, you were creating a father. Yeah. You may not even know that. I, That's deep. That's deep. It may shock you, but the words was healing something in me. Yes. Because if it irks me, something's still broken. Yes. So and I'll tell you what was really broken, in case you don't know. It's, my dad is a wonderful man. God yeah. love him. He's amazing. Very principled, very dedicated. But he was very strict when he wasn't saved. Very harsh. And so I was afraid to father anybody. I preached a whole message in Northampton that caused my whole church to leave me. At one point, I had to beg them for forgiveness. My entire message was on Father's Day. You know how I do, wait for these days to blow things up. My entire message was on Father's Day, and the title was, I am not your daddy. And I exegeted for the entire hour how I am not, will never be, can never happen, 
be your spiritual father. I went through different points as to why. I destroyed and dismantled the very theology of it. I, and a lot of it, and then suddenly they all said, we're leaving. And I remember Bishop David calling me because he listened to my message. He watched it on YouTube. He said, why did you do that? I said, <laughs> I said Dad, I'm too young. At the time I was 19. 20 or so, I said, I'm too young. I can't do this. They're all saying, dad, 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 I'm still dealing with my own issues. I can't be dealing with my own and then be trying to nurture these people. He said, it's not who you are. It's what they see in you that matters. And honestly, that journey has carried me to today. Part of my irk with it, though, now is no longer about being that. My irk with it now is how, what people think it is. I think people think it is my time to sort of replace my natural dad. Um, and in a way, there is that natural parenting alongside it, but they see it as um, my chance to be a child again. Uh, one woman even said, I should be listening to all her problems. I'm her spiritual father. I should be like her, her dustbin was the literal words she used. And I said, no, absolutely not. And that's why I tell people that I struggle with counseling. Because I know as a father, I have to be both a counselor and a coach. Because I can pull you to your future as much as I want to, but if there's an elastic band behind you, it's just going to snap you right back every single time. And so I would, my preference is to be your coach. I want to say, get over it, move forward, go take the nations, guys. Come on, gun ho. But then I look behind you and I go, oh, but there's this and there's this. And now we have to deal with the garbage so that you can have the future that you want. And I think some people, what they do is they don't want the future. They just want me to stay in the, in the garbage. They want me to stay in their Egypt with them when I'm trying to draw them to a place of promise. And sometimes I think the fear is while I'm doing that, I'm still hearing you talk Egyptian. Egyptian means limitation. And I'm worried that that will start rubbing off on me. If you keep talking limitation back, back, back then when I'm trying to myself. See, the thing we don't realize about Moses, he wasn't just trying to get them to the promised land. He was trying to get himself. And the most tragic part is God said to him, come on this mountain. Look, I stood on that mountain. I went there to the Jordan, the exact mountain he would have seen the promised land for. They waited for the sun to rise so I could see it. You can see the entire promised land from that mountain. It's crazy. And I looked on that mountain and I said, God, may this never be me. Because Moses was told, you can see it, but you'll never enter it. And why? Because he was surrounded by people who kept speaking Egyptian when he's trying to draw them into the promised land. I think that's a good place to close, don't you? Uh, we have, please give Haley and Sterling a big, 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 big God bless you. Please give them a big God bless you. How many of you got something from today? If you were blessed by today, please give them a big God bless you. Um, if you'll stay with me, we're going to pray for, for people. But before we do, we're going to pray for a few people today. I want to pray for Pastor Rene. Please come up. I'll just take my seat here. She is uh... <laughs> how many years has it been now? Six years. And uh she went and got selfish, and she's getting married, and she's all kind of... Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Did I not want to say that? Did I say... Okay, let me leave. Ground open up. Okay, I'm sorry. She's, she's fallen in love and all that. She's been selfish, and now she's got to leave to be with the person she's with. Please just stand up and just help me pray for her as we release her to the next phase of her journey in Christ. I think the leader should come and also surround. If as well. leaders can come, we just stay seated. Stay seated, please. 
we're going to. Now, this isn't your official leaving. Um, so we're not doing dinner or anything yet. This is just because this is the last time I'm going to see you here because I'm traveling, traveling for the whole month of July. And I'm taking a holiday in August. So please, Light London, give me. Thank you. Um, so our wonderful leaders will be preaching to you every single week. And I'm excited for that as well. Um, just just your hands towards me. This is always uh, happy, sad. No, you dead. If you cry, I will send you out right now because I'm not about to cry here. <laughs> I actually said, you better cry. <laughs> yes. I said, if you don't cry. <laughs> ah. Just just your hands towards me. Just as your hands towards us. And just pray in the Holy Ghost. Lanza pro hevente que preenso su frajida la la prengo prajida bahaya. Lanza pro se vende que preenta freíso su prajada fetiances. And the Spirit of God says over you, the Lord says, daughter, I've already paved out the next ten steps ahead of you, says the Spirit of the living God. And the Lord says, I've already gone into your future, says the Lord. And I am arranging and rearranging things on your behalf. And the Lord says, part of what I'm rearranging is the Spirit of God says, I'm bringing you to a new company, says the Lord of friends. But the Lord says, you won't forget the old. And, and the Lord says, we'll have the ability to even bring them into the new, says the Lord. And the Lord says, no, this, this is not a leaving. This is just a connecting of new families, says the Spirit of God. And the Lord says, daughter, I'm extending your network and I'm extending your reach. I'm extending your net, says the Spirit of God. And the Lord says, you're going to know in this season what it means to launch your net into the deep. But the Lord says, daughter, I'm releasing you as a missionary, says the Lord. I'm releasing you on assignment, says the Spirit of God. And the Lord says, daughter, what I'm increasing is the depth of how you hear my voice, says the Spirit of God. The Lord says, daughter, you're going to have those nudgings and those impressions from me. And the Spirit of God says, you're going to be a woman in the boardroom, but you're also going to be a woman, says the Lord, on the streets for me, says the Spirit of God, who has the ability to leave a suggestion in the hearts of people that I am able to water into my kingdom on the inside of them. And the Lord says, I'm going to give you those words in season to those who are weary, says the Spirit of God. And the Lord says, you're going to see that you have the ability, says the Lord, to be the glory and the lifter. And the Spirit of God says, I'm going to make you a woman in the villages, says the Lord. And the Lord says, I'm going to make you a woman who people will say, this is my hero. This is my hero. This is my hero. This is one who has even saved me. And the Spirit of God says, there will be those who have read your books who will say, I was rescued from suicide. I was brought back from the edge. If it had not been for the confidence in you, I wouldn't have found confidence in myself. And the Spirit of God says, daughter, my promise to you is the Lord says that you won't water and not be watered by me, says the Spirit of God. The Lord says, even as you've made yourself a sprinkler, even as you've made yourself one who will water the Lord says, I'm watering you. And the Lord says, I'm releasing my blessing on you. And the Lord says, I'm releasing my blessing on your path. And I'm releasing my blessing on your future, says the Spirit of God. And I see you in the realm of the Spirit, and you're coming to a Y road. And there's a choice to go left, and there's a choice to go right in the midst of you. And I'm looking almost into a little bit of a future decision that you're about to make, says the Spirit of God. And the Lord says, when you get to this place of a decision between the academic world and going further into the realms of business, 
The Spirit of God says, know this, for the Lord says, you will not make a wrong decision. Because the Lord says, one will connect into the other anyway, says the Spirit of God. And so the Lord says, daughter, I don't want you to worry at this time about that, says the Lord. Because the Lord says, one will connect to the other. And the Lord says, know this, and this is not a light thing that I say. The Spirit of God says, I have given you a tongue for the Nebuchadnezzars. I have given you a mouth for the Pharaoh. I have even given you a mouth for the female leaders in politics. I have given you an ability, says the Spirit of God, that you will be their friend. I see your feet in the United Nations, touching the ground there. And the Lord says, I'm going to give you a voice, says the Lord. But the Lord says, there are those who will say of you. The Lord says, they will say, we don't want to just discuss politics. We want to discuss how we do this in motherhood. We want to discuss how we do this and raise our children. We want to discuss how we do this. And the Lord says, it's not because you feel like you have all the answers. But the Lord says, you have all the answers because you have me, says the Lord. And so, Father, we just bless your daughter on this new phase of her journey that she's entering into. I'm asking you for your keeping grace upon her future relationship. I'm asking you not just for keeping grace, but that both of them will enjoy this next season of their life in the mighty name of Jesus. And all God's people said a mighty amen. And we, we're releasing also today James, Allo, and Rhoda to Light Island. This will be... Oh, they thought you were leaving. No, they're going to Light Island to... St- <laughs> what happened? No. <laughs> Come, please. Just take a seat here. Amy, why don't you go ahead and prophesy and start and release the word of the Lord. Oh, Father God, we just want to glorify your holy name. We want to thank you, Lord, for this precious family. If we can just for one minute just pray over the Spirit, pray in the Spirit and just decree. We just want to pray. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You know, I just even hear the Spirit of God saying that son and daughter, I've not only just given you Ireland, but in a few years, you're actually going to be one that's going to oversee Europe. And I hear the Spirit of God saying that, can I trust you to steward this nation well? Because the Spirit of God is saying that, son, you're going to find many different people even coming to you, not necessarily even for business meetings, but they're going to come and say, we need you in parliament. We need you here to actually be in a governmental meeting because God is saying that, son, I've allowed you to be a governmental prophet as well as a business prophet as well. And you've been one that, yes, you've been contending even about the apostolic. But son, I hear the Spirit of God saying that you are going to be one that is not going to raise up the ones that are coming from the ground. But God is saying you're going to already have the influencers that are already established coming to say, can you father me? And God is saying that I'm going to bring ones with status around you so that they can actually make the work easier. And I hear over you, daughter, I hear the Spirit of God saying, Rhoda, you've been one that you've seen your husband pioneer. You've seen your husband go forth. But I hear the Spirit of God saying that you are one that has been commissioned for a great work, not necessarily even for women. But I literally hear the Spirit of God saying that you are a midwife to many, that literally people are going to come to you and they're going to say, I want to do this. I want to birth this. And you're going to be the one that's going to walk them through them birthing the new business, birthing the new ministry. And I even hear the Spirit of God saying that, daughter, you are going to cause a revival. Bible in worship in Ireland. You know, where the scripture comes, it says, those that worship in spirit and in truth. And God is saying, I need you to equip that nation on how to worship me. That there's going to be moments that you're going to have to maybe take worship. There's going to be moments where you're going to have to sit down with the psalmist and train them how to be spirit-led. The spirit of God is saying that, daughter, I've allowed you to be one that is going to be the prophetic voice in your church that is going to make sure that worship is on a point. Because what they're going to say, particularly about Light Ireland, is the worship, the worship, the worship. There's going to be moments that you won't even need to prophesy apostles 
people. There's going to be moments where you're not even going to have to take the pulpit because the worship will literally wreck the people. I literally even hear the Spirit of God saying that you're going to have an angelic ministry, that angels are going to come. And a similar angel that is even under Apostle Toby in terms of the angel of destiny, that where they came and said Ireland was a dead land. The Spirit of God is saying, I'm reviving light Ireland and I'm using you to revive the dead things. And I literally even hear over both of you prophesy over the dry bones. I'm even hearing the Spirit of God saying that, son and daughter, I'm going to allow you to walk across the land and you're going to prophesy to the dry land. I'm even seeing farms. I'm literally seeing that God is going to give you guys land in terms of agriculture in Ireland. That you're actually going to, I don't, I literally am seeing God saying that, pray for the farms. That you're going to even have people, farmers, literally come to you saying, I want to give you meat. I want to, and that is going to be prophetic, that literally you guys are going to be a meaty church. Because you guys are going to be giving such great teaching. And you're going to be teaching people how to even grow in the word. And how to grow in worship. And how to be great amongst the kingdom. And I, I just hear this last thing concerning both of you. I hear God saying, don't be afraid to rebuke. Because some of the people who are going to come under you are going to be the ones that were very scared to be fathered and discipled. But don't be afraid to rebuke. Don't be afraid to come and say, no, sit down. No, come here. No, do this. Because the Spirit of God is saying that through your rebuke, you're going to raise up not just people who are going to be influencers, but I genuinely believe in the midst of your light Ireland, you're actually going to raise up MPs. seeing that that God's going to begin to move in you both you're going to say what can we do for the local government and it's going to cause a favor to come upon you uh, there's something about young people in Ireland that the government needs help with that they're disenfranchised there's not enough investment in the areas and the Lord is going to cause you to bring a revival there I keep seeing that scripture that says, wherever this river flowed, there was life. Life is issuing from you. And I feel like, Rhoda, the devil attacked you because of this. This day was coming. There was an attack that was launched against you, but it was not just against your health. It was to come for your marriage. But you have a strong man. Father, I release this anointing oil upon Rhoda's head. And I command a prophetic grace upon her to rise to a new level. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I command the prophetic grace to rise to a new level upon her life. Father, that she will have a word in season. And Father, out of her belly will literally flow rivers of living water. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I commission her for this work in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, if I've never commissioned her, I recognize the grace of the prophetic that rests upon her life. And I'm asking you, Father, for a great increase of this grace in the mighty, glorious name of Jesus. I'm asking you, Father, that she will hear your voice like never before. And that she'll move like Jeremiah. Fire in her bones. Fire in her bones. Fire in her bones. Fire in her bones. Let your words be in her like fire in her bones. In the mighty name of Jesus. I call up the prophetic grace to a new level. I turn up the volume in the realm of the spirit. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I release grace upon my son. I ask you to bless him now in the name of Jesus. Release your grace for Ireland. Father, I speak a great grace rest upon him. Grace to heal the sick. Yes. Grace to raise the dead. Hallelujah. Grace for mi miracles. Hallelujah. Grace for wonders. Grace. grace to prophesy at a new level. In the name of Jesus. Let your anointing rest upon him. Let your living waters flow over him and out of him. Let Ireland never be the same again. Father, I ask you to give them a multicultural house. Cause people to come from the north, the south, and the east, and the west. Amen. Bring a mighty revival to Ireland because of them. But the Lord says it is bigger than Ireland. It is bigger than Ireland. Ireland is the springboard. The Lord says it is bigger than Ireland. 
as well says, while you pray for Ireland, pray for Europe. It is bigger than Ireland, says the Spirit of God. And while you pray for Ireland, pray for Nigeria. It is bigger than Ireland, says the Spirit of God. Your reach is bigger. So don't get bogged down in the pastoral. Be the apostle. I release you with grace in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, thank you. Please give them a big round of applause. Let's celebrate them. Uh, next week we will be in Ireland. I think my time is up completely. I wanted to pray for people, but my time is up. Can I ask you all something as a church? Can I ask you? Just for two minutes, just uh, be seated for two minutes. Can I ask you something? Um, my travel schedule is gone up a bit. I want to ask you all just for three things. Number one, I want to ask you that you pray for me. Is that okay? I mean it seriously. I don't mean like just God bless him. Every time you think of me, please pray for me. Yes? Because uh, the nations don't want Toby or I mean. They want Jesus. Please pray. Amen? Can I tell you what to pray for me? That I have more encounters with the Lord. That's all I want. I don't want more money. I'm blessed. I, don't, I just want more encounters with Jesus. If you could unite as a church to be my shield team and pray for me, that's all I ask for. Grace. Is that okay? Please pray. I'll be in um, uh, North Carolina, New York, New Orleans, Ghana. There's just so many places up and down there, Malawi, then Zimbabwe, South Africa. So just pray for grace. That's all I ask for. Is that okay? Um, number two thing, um, as I travel, if you want to come with, I'll be very selective, but you may have to go on your own coin. So I call it, um, uh, what do I call it? Uh, groaners, goers, and givers. So groaners are prayer people. Pray if you can't come. But if you want to come and you want to help out, then you can come also, but we need to just uh, vet you first. Because I can't travel with everybody. Some people, you can't throw me off. You'll be, you'll be shocked how different I am when I travel. My, my mood can just be a very interesting mood. Kendrick will tell you. I can be smiling one minute, shut down on you the next, and I don't want to talk to you because I'm in a sensitive place trying to hear God and all of that. So if you're coming to mess around, don't come. But if you're coming to be sensitive and pray and all of that, then please feel free to come. We had a wonderful group with us in Dallas. Some people, I'm sure, are coming to Ireland. Who's coming to Ireland? Please don't all come to Ireland. We need people here. Service will still be happening here, so don't all come. But whoever's coming, please come. It'll be great. Um, then we need more givers. We need more givers. And uh, I'm not going to force anybody, cajole anyone. I'm not going to tell you if you come, you'll have a thousand houses on a hill. God will bless you as you give. But we need more givers. Traveling around the world is very expensive. It's also quite tasking and tiring. But traveling around the world is very expensive. And, uh, and, we, and part of what we're traveling is not just to bless other churches, Part of the travel also allows us to extend Light London in different places. Often when I travel, I meet with our global family. I book a day to go to a restaurant, and I ask people to come. We have great meet and greets. We had a wonderful one in Houston, another one in Dallas, a few. Uh, in Florida, came out to meet me in Florida. So this is a chance to meet the global family. So in the future, we can establish presence in different nations around the world. So I am asking you, I know many of you already so, many of you are tithers and givers, but I am asking you to be partners in that regard. Um, we have a trip coming up to, my first trip is to New York, but 
I, I can only afford right now on the ministry to go by myself. And I never travel that long by myself. I just don't like doing it. I don't think it's wisdom to travel by myself. You'll be shocked the things that happen out there. Ken, Kendrick has stories. I don't like traveling by myself. And right now, we can only afford for me to travel by myself. I want to ask, I'm not going to beg you, but 10 people who are willing to stand up and say, we'll sow whatever seed you want to sow, but we're going to sow towards that travel. Please just come out of your seats and just stand here if it's you. Thank you. I'm not going to force anybody. It's, I'm not even going to tell you the amount to sow. I'm just going to ask you to sow something sacrificial towards that uh, towards the ticket. I'm going to be traveling. I want to travel with Eros, but our accountant is telling us because of the amount of travel, we can't afford right now to book Eros, his ticket, and his hotel. So if you, if you want to be a blessing, I thank you. I appreciate those of you who come. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If God is nudging you in any small way to come, then come. Even if you say 10 pounds, at least you're a blessing. You're a blessing. So just come. Some people sit down because they feel like it's not significant. Just come and be a blessing if you want to be a blessing. Thank you. You'll be shocked how far 10 pounds can go. It could be that 10 pounds that we needed to get, to get overboard. So thank you. Thank you. I'm going to ask God something for those of you who are standing here in front of me, who are sowing, that you won't forget this seed. That as I pray for people, as I lay hands on people as, around the world, as souls are getting saved, that God will remember you. When I say God remember you, it's not that he forgot. When God remembers you, the Bible talks about God writing our names in a book of remembrance. That he schedules a day of great blessing for us. I want to pray that God will remember you for lifting, for promotion great things to happen in your life. Thank you so much for coming. Just lift your hands. Father, right now I pray for those who have chosen to give today towards that uh, journey uh, to the nations. Lord, I'm asking as I fly in that plane, let their destinies go up in the name of Jesus. I'm asking, Lord, as, even as I break the clouds, let something prophetic happen in their life, that they're breaking barriers and limitations. Father, I ask as I land, as my plane lands, I'm asking that their destiny will land securely in the name of Jesus. I'm asking as souls are being saved and want your kingdom, that their family members will begin to come into your kingdom. Lord, I'm asking you right now to be witness to this seed that your people are sowing into this a trip. I'm asking you to be witness. Write these names in the book of remembrance. Let them remember this day that it was at this moment something shifted in their life forever. In the name of Jesus. Everybody who's sitting down, please stand up and stretch your hands. I decree an overflow of that blessing as you pray for me in the name of Jesus. I decree an overflow. What I want you to do is shout shifts seven times. Just shout it. In the name of Jesus, I command a shift in your life. I command a shift in your destiny. I command a shift of destiny helpers to come into your life. I command a new shift of angelic reinforcement in your life. I command a new shift of resources to come in your life. I command your enemies to shift out of your way right now in the mighty, glorious name of Jesus. And church, all I want you to do is shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Just do that. Thank you. God bless you. Please, please, when you sow your seed, there'll be a link, uh, church suite or where? Um, if you make the donation under the fund called Seed, that would be really appreciated. I will put a message in um, the WhatsApp chat. Is there a way to put the seed out of the fund? Um, no, the fund is the reference. It's already created. So there will be a reference on church we called Seed. Please just sow it directly there. God bless you. Thank you so much. Huh?
Oh, um, so we have a WhatsApp group chat. You're visiting. God bless you, sir. Thank you so much. Appreciate you for that. If you are not part of our uh, group chat, we can make sure we get that link to you. Please just come to Amma if you need that link, and, and she'll make that happen. God bless you. God bless you. Please, uh, just for a moment, stand to your feet before we close. Just stay, stay stood. We're about to close now. Um, if you're in this room today, you heard the story of Haley and Sterling. Maybe you haven't even begun the journey of faith in Christ. Perhaps you don't even know Jesus. I know I didn't preach today, but I'm sure something in the message may have hit something in your spirit. If you're here today, um, I'm going to give two altar calls. You need prayer around an issue with your father. You heard Sterling's story. He just met his father in the mall. He was praying for God to make it happen. You have a similar story, some abandonment, some rejection, some issue with, uh, in the area of your father. Um, Every head bowed, every eye closed. Please just lift your hand and we want to pray for you. God bless you. I see that hand. I see that hand. Um, I know they're going to be packing away, but please just make the next step and come out of your seats. And uh, Haley and Sterling, if you maybe go and pray for them on the side over here as, uh, as ushers are packing. Th thank you. The second group of people I want to pray for today if you're here and you are not born again, that means you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You don't know Jesus. And if you don't know Jesus, you don't know the Father. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. If you're here today, please don't move. Please don't move. Please don't move unless you're coming to be prayed for. Please don't leave now. Unless you're coming to be prayed for. Please don't leave now. If you're here today... Are these for, to be born again, or are these all for fathers? Oh, sorry, please continue. I thought you were leaving. If you're here today, you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You don't know him personally. Please, every head bowed and eye closed again. If you're here, you don't know Jesus personally. You want to know him as your Lord and Savior. Please indicate by the lifting of your hand. I want to pray for you today. God bless you. I see that hand. God bless you. I see that hand. Uh, are there more hands joining them? Please lift the hands high so I can see them. God bless you. I see the hand up here. Ushers, if you can see them as well. God bless you. I see that hand. Please come down. Today, you don't know Jesus or your Lord and Savior. Please come down. I saw those hands. I saw about four or five hands. Please come. Please come. Please come. God bless you. Come on. Heaven rejoices. Wow. God is amazing. God is amazing. God is amazing. Please come. Um, Pastor Rene and Pastor Enoch, if you would also just take them maybe to this side, please, and just pray with them and for them. Um, the, the, if you want to give your life to Christ, I saw more hands. Please keep, keep clapping. They're coming. Keep clapping. I'm so sorry. Because of time, we have to, we have to uh, uh, pray on the side here today. But... Uh, Rene and Enoch, if you just maybe take them uh, to this corner here and just pray with them and for them. God really bless you. Um, thank you. Please, Rene, Enoch, where are they? Pastor Rene, Pastor Enoch. Okay. Thank you. Just take them over here to this corner and pray with them. Big God bless you. Please give them a round of applause. They're giving their life to Jesus today. That's so awesome. God bless you all. I feel strange because I haven't exerted so much energy preaching. I'm not used to leaving this relaxed. Um, this is weird. Who's giving announcements? <laughs> Hello, testing one, two, three, four. So this is our time for announcements. As you heard that we have... Okay, so at the moment, we don't have connection. Um, but if you would like to join the WhatsApp group chat, please feel free to come to me afterwards and I can add you, which is where we'll have... Oh, you guys can sit down. It's okay. Um, where we'll have all of the links of everything I'm about to announce. So um, first of all, we have our giving and our tithing link, um, which is the same link which 
you know, if anyone has come down to uh, give a seed offering for the traveling, it's the same link. You just click where it says tithe and there's a drop down menu. So you can just click um, tithe or offering or seed, whichever one um, works for you. Uh, the second one is Light Island. So has anybody been to a Friday Fires event? Lovely. So um, there will be a Friday Fires conference. It's a three-day conference on the 28th of June, which is very soon next week, actually. Um, Ireland is only an hour away, and the tickets are still available. So um, if you would like to, you know, go, um, the link will be on Eventsbrite, and the link will also be in the WhatsApp group chat. Um, if you would like to volunteer for that event as well, um, then the link will also be in the WhatsApp group chat. Um, we have a workers' retreat. So this is for leaders and for volunteers on the 20th to the 22nd of September. More information will be released during the week. So you can sign up um, through that link and also get more details and information about where that actually is. Um, we also have 100 days of prayer. Woo! So that will be running every day, um, and the link to join that will also be on our um, group chat. But basically, we just pray together globally, and um, it's not just everyone in this room, but also people who are in different lands, um, Africa, South Africa, America, everywhere in Europe, everything's there. So um, yeah, if you would like to join that, the prayers are in the morning, so feel free to join. And the last thing is, actually, one of our members, because we're a supportive household over here, um, one of our members has an event. She's a fashion designer. It's called House of Rose. Um, and she's having a fashion show. Yeah. She's having a fashion show on the 28th of July at 6 p.m. Um, and unfortunately, we can't put the flyer on there because the internet um, in view to the bar is trifling at the moment. Um, but on the 28th of July at 6 p.m., um, there will be... Uh, a fashion show and so I'll post all of the details again on the WhatsApp group chat so if you guys would like to join the WhatsApp group chat please find me um, I'll be outside in the foyer and I believe that's everything Light London be loved believe be light